Hello, I'm Joe McEntee, Group Editor at IOP Publishing, and I'm here in San Francisco to talk to Tom Houskin, Principal Analyst at Strategies Unlimited, about the future of the laser in fiber optic communication. Thanks for joining us, Tom. My pleasure, thanks. I just want to start with some, some fundamentals. Um, semiconductor lasers are very much the workhorses of today's optical communications networks, the physical layer that, that supports the internet, basically. Um, can you explain how lasers make the network tick? Sure, the semiconductor laser is just a substitute for the electronic driver. The optical fiber that connects it to the detector is a substitute for the copper wire that goes in between it. And the detector on the other end is a substitute for the electronic receiver. Um, that link, that interconnect, could be as long as an undersea interconnect from New York to, to Paris, or it could be an interconnect that is as short as something on a board or in a backplane today, possibly someday inside the chip. Uh, so it's just an interconnect, but it has certain characteristics that allow it to go at very long distances with very high data rates uh, and very cost effectively. So today, in the early days of the communic optical communication, this was used in undersea links and long haul links on the east coast of the US. Uh, and then they've gradually started to work farther, farther in towards the user. Um, and so the battles are fought over exactly where that, that point is. But it's, it's really just that link. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting about the, the link is that uh, most people probably don't appreciate that you can get hundreds of thousands of phone calls over that fiber. And in fact, the part of the fiber that actually carries the information is much thinner than a human hair. And for most people, it's just magic. They have no idea really what goes on inside that. So I mean, just in terms of setting some perspective, the telecoms investment boom of the, of the late 1990s and the subsequent bust a few, few years later really transformed the telecommunications business. Um, I mean, how was the laser industry affected by, by all that upheaval? Uh, so for better or for worse, I, a couple of things happened, I think. One thing is that it accelerated, but probably would have happened anyway, and that is a lot of the, not so much the, the laser fabrication, but the assembly went to China, uh, some consolidation that went on. And also, what's, the industry has just sort of evolved where a lot of the margins are going to companies like Cisco Systems and so forth. Uh, and there's not as much money going into the development of the the lasers and the other uh, optical component products. So I think that would have happened over a longer term, but because of the telecom bubble, it there was a very sharp rise and a very sharp fall. Another thing that's happened is that the venture in community has been very reluctant to put money back into optical components. So there has been some, but uh, they tend to move in herds and they've moved on to solar and green technologies and biomedical and healthcare technologies. And in fact, they've also already moved on from some of those as well. Uh, so there hasn't been as much of the venture money going into the, invested into the optical components as there was back in the 90s. So it, it, is fundamental research still important for the de development of telecoms laser technologies or is, it, or, or is this very much an applied R&D concern? Well, so first of all, if you look at the, the history of the optical communications business over the last 40 so years, there was a couple periods where there was a lot of uh, progress in the research R&D that found its way into commercial development and actual u the application of the communications. So one was around 1970 with the perfection of the optical fiber and the semiconductor laser. Another one was around the, the mid to late 80s all the way through the 90s with the optical amplifier and, and this sort of thing that came about the same time as deregulation in the telecom industry and the internet and there was lots of available money and all that. You don't see the kind of money going into it, into research today that you did then. I think a lot of those big gains have been done. But uh, the basic research is still very much important because I don't see it as necessarily a pipeline from the basic research through applied R&D to the product development. It really should be something where there's a lot of interconnections. If it's done right, there should be interconnections between the product development where they're trying to solve problems. They may need to go back to the basic research but then in the basic research, they may come up with ideas that can lead in entirely new directions. So if it's done right, I think the basic research is still very much important, uh, but not in a pipeline fashion, and in maybe going off in different directions that you may not expect. Fast forward 20, 30 years. What, what will the optical network look like, and what will the communications lasers that underpin it look like in terms of performance? 
Well, the performance will certainly improve, and it's a bit hard to say just how far they will go. Um, people have deb debated that for years and years, for decades, really. Um, I think if, if you, I did this recently where you can take a chart and you run it out at the rate that it's been going, at an exponential rate, uh, out to say 2030 or 2040, you would get something like 10 terabits per second data rates in 2030 and, and 100 terabits per second data rates in 2040. And this is clearly not reasonable. That's, it, it's, it's really something where we're getting to a point where it's starting to saturate. So that, that's not going to happen so much. They're going to be incremental improvements. But I think where you will see it is you'll, you may be surprised at how much optical communication makes it inside the home, not so much to tether to your laptop, but maybe inside the game console. People are talking and working on putting optical communications actually inside mobile phone handsets. Uh, also in sensors, it's not exactly the conventional optical communications that we think about, but it could be into sensors for perimeter security or smart buildings. Um, or uh, gas detection and, and this sort of thing. So it's a little bit different direction maybe, uh, but I think that's what we may be surprised at in 20 or 30 years. That's great, thanks very much, Tom. Uh, my pleasure, thanks.